Okay, good evening everybody. Tonight's year is entitled More Hidden Miracles. Now it's always dangerous to call something more or part two or because people who didn't have hear part one are not going to come. But uh, I just want to say that we're not going to lose anything out by seeing this, hearing this year or seeing this year from by itself. Because what I'd like to do very quickly <coughs> is to recap what we said last week. We're in the Parshios of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. All of these Parshios, the, uh, the, the root, the core of our, our faith in the Kodesh Baruch Hu, our faith in, in uh, the Torah, our faith in the eventual redemption, our faith in Olam Abba, all of the Yisodas of Jewish, all the fundament, fundamentals of Jewish belief really are contained in these Parshiot, in these uh, weekly portions now. And uh, as we mentioned last week, there's a very famous Ramban at the end of Pasha's bow, last week's Pasha, where basically he describes what, the, what we're supposed to get out of Yetzirah Mitzrayim. What is a Jew nowadays? When we sit down to the Seder, what, is act, what actually are we supposed to be internalizing? And he starts off by saying that from the days of uh, Enosh, who was Adam's grandson, there were three groups of people, three mistaken sets of ideas which started to take hold. The first group, remember we said, was that they denied the, the existence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chalila, they says that they were true atheists. They said there's no God and none is in, And because <coughs> they also denied the fact that there was a creation, they said the world has been here forever. The world is a solid state. Clearly, if you don't believe in a beginning, you cannot believe in a creator. So those two things went together. There was another group of people who weren't quite as a serious, didn't make quite a serious mistake. They believed there was a God, but they believed that his transcendence, that he's so out there, that by definition he couldn't know what was going on in this world. His, as we would say in English, his transcendence precluded his immanence. And as we know, God is both in a way which we can't understand. He's both totally transcendent, he's Kodesh, 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 thrice removed, but on the other hand, Kavodam Olam, his glory fills the world, there is no place which is absent of him. So he's both totally removed and totally present. That was a mistake that people made. The third group of people believed in a God and they believed that his transcendence did not preclude his imminence, but they believed he didn't care. There was no relationship. God, so to speak, created the world, and then he got in the car and he went off to play golf, as one might say. He wasn't interested. He left the world, so to speak, uh, like the Kidgei Hayam, like the sea of the, the fish of the sea, that there is no specific hashkacha, so uh, a specific supervision. In other words, there could be a, a general supervision of any particular genus, some particular species of fish, or fish in general, but each individual fish has no specific uh, hashkacha supervision, and th this group of people made that mistake to believe that God is not interested in a relationship with man, and therefore, says the Ramban, by bringing these signs and miracles, and taking Klal Yisrael out of Mitzrayim to be a people to himself, this put paid, and he brings psukim to these three mistaken ideas, that there's a God who created the world, ex nihilo, he exists, he knows, and he cares. And he went on to say two other things. He's all-powerful, he can do anything he wants, he's omnipotent. And also, the fifth thing the Ramban states <coughs> is that because these, these miracles were, so to speak, we would use modern-day parlance, advertised, they were trailed that Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu to tell Paro, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. So we see the truth of prophecy, that God speaks to his servants, the Nevi'im, and confides in them his secrets. Says the Ramban, because this is essential to a belief in the Torah, because unless we believe that there's something called prophecy, that a God speaks to man and confides to him, so then we all we know of personal experience of the Torah was only the first two mitzvahs. So the whole Torah, says the Ramban, stands on this understanding, this belief that there is a thing called Nebuah. Those are the five points that we covered last week. Now, we also then made a diversion then to say 
which is a question many people ask. Okay, Rabbi, very nice, you know, but God wants me to believe in him, so why doesn't he do the, at least one little miracle? I mean, Klal Israel in Mitzrayim had the advantage of having all this supernatural stuff going on. So, you know, why, why should I believe? And I told you a story um, about the, uh, the, the, the brilliant little girl who was a, Rachmaninoff, as a pianist who could play Rachmaninoff better than the best, and the once and once only concert. And basically, Hashem is not going to jump through hoops in every generation for every atheist and uh, denier who doesn't believe that this once and once only reorchestration of nature took place. And the reason is, is because this world, as we said before, is a world where Hashem has deliberately hidden himself. The root of the world, the word olam, world, is alam, ayin lamad, lamad mem, which means hidden or concealed. This world is designed as a place of concealment. And the reason is, as the Ram Chal says, <coughs> both in Mesil Sushoim and Derech Hashem, that in order for us to have schava onish, and in order for us to uh, be able to have a relationship with Hashem which is meaningful, and not us to just receive a free handout, which he calls Nahamati Kesufa, the bread of shame, Hashem devised the system by which we can actually earn the reward that He wants to give us anyway, and He does that by making us, to a certain extent, work, meaning we have to show our faith in Him, and we have to perform the mitzvahs, even in a way where there is no immediate revelation. So in order for us to be able to earn the reward for the mitzvahs, it has to be that God, God's hand is not totally evident. The whole purpose of the world is to be a being who is the recipient of God's goodness, and the only way that God's goodness can be the greatest goodness that can be, which is, of course, axiomatically there can be other. God's goodness can't be anything better than the less, than the, the best possible goodness that there is, and the best possible goodness demands that the goodness is given in a way which is completely received, and the only way a person can really own something, he can be co something, is by earning it. Otherwise, he doesn't feel totally happy with it. As he says, it's like a pauper sticking out his hand to his benefactor, where what he gets, he doesn't really, he's not really kone in the same way. When you work for something, it becomes part of you. So, seeing as that is the purpose of the world, so Hashem is not going to reveal himself. He can't reveal him, so to speak, because the whole purpose of the world was, as we said before, but it had to be that at one point in history that Hashem changed the nature to show and to tell, and that's why the remembrance <coughs> of uh, the uh, Yitzhak Mitzrayim is so important, and that's why the are severe punishments, for example, uh, eating chametz on Pesach, kores, which seems very extreme, but one understands that the whole uh, basis of our belief is because we, it's been handed down to us, it's been passed over to us. The truth that he says, Mitzrayim, the Maimon Haisina, Haisinai, the coming out of Egypt, the Exodus, and the giving of the Torah, so these things become very, very vital. The observance of these mitzvahs become extremely important. So then I'm just going to carry on now. I'm going to loosely translate. And similarly, many, many mitzvahs, which are all connected with remembering of the coming out of Egypt, and everything is in order that we should be able, in all our generations, have testimony for the signs that we shouldn't forget. And there should be no opportunity for an atheist to deny our faith in God. That's why we have to keep these very fresh in our minds. Because somebody who buys a mezuzah for a small amount of money and he fixes it to his door, he's already admitted, he's already testified, <clears throat> he's, and he understands what it is that he's doing. He's already testified to the chidush of the world, that the world was created ex nihilo, yesh uh, He's also testified to the fact that Hashem knows and Hashem supervises. He wants a relationship. He asks me to do these things to build this relationship with him. And he's also testifying to the truth of prophecy. <coughs> and he will believe in all of the corners of the Torah, the aspects of the Torah, apart from the fact that he's admitting <coughs> of the great kindness of the Creator in when for those who do his will that he took us out from that slavery to freedom and to great honor, to merit our fathers who desired uh, in the fear of his name. And that's as I said before, therefore, uh, the, the, uh, we're very 
careful. We say be be havi zahir be mitzvah kala kechamura. You should be as careful with a light mitzvah, so to speak, as with a, a heavy mitzvah, because all of them are extremely dear to Hashem, because they all express the rotzen of Hashem, Hashem's will, and the person's will, who a person is, so to speak, is expressed by what he wants, and therefore, if Hashem wants, that's the idea of a mitzvah. That's what Hashem wants. That's the closest we can come to him by aligning ourselves with what he wants by doing his will. And this was, as I said, the whole point of the in, in the initial creation. <clears throat> the only reason Hashem de- desired that there should be a lower world in order that there should be a creature called man, called the Jewish people, who would testify and thank God and that's the point of the raising up of voices in prayer and the point, the kavana of, of shuls, vatiknesios and the merit of the tefillis arabim oh, by the way I just forgot I'd like to say that this year is Lilui Nishmas Yocheved Vas Shnei Zalman my great grandmother whose yacht side is tonight Place, have a shul, people can come together and thank Hashem. Now, he comes to a very interesting point, and this line we're going to examine in some detail. Says the Ramban, <coughs> and from the great um, miracles famous public miracles Adam mode benisim hanistorim a person admits to nisim nistorim hidden miracles and that's the title of the shir and we're going to discuss that in some detail shame you saw that torah kula that they are the foundation of the entire torah shein la adam chelak betoras moshe that a person has no portion in the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ad shenamin, until we believe, but called of Arenu, that in all our things, umikreinu, and everything that happens to us, shakulam nisim, that all of them are miracles, ein bahem teva umin hago shalolom, there is nothing natural or the way of the world about anything that happens to us, bein barabim, either in a collective sense, bein biyochid, or an individual sense, ella im yase ha mitzvahs. If a person does the mitzvahs, yatslichenu scharo, they will apportion him his reward. Vim yavo alehem, and if he transgresses them, yachrisenu ansho, they will cut literally. They will apportion him his punishment. Hakol begazeres elyon, all is by the decree of the Most High, Kasha Iskarti, as I mentioned, Kavar, and and they will be, it will become well known. Hanisim and Istorim, the hidden miracles. The Indian Harabim, when it comes to the public life of the Jewish people, Kasha Yovo Be Torah, when it comes to the testimonies of the Torah, the Indian Abrochus will close the blessings and the curses. Kamosha Omar Hakosib says in the Posuk, Omru Kola Goyim, and all the nations will say, Alma Asa Hashem. Why did Hashem do Kacha thus to Lord this 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 um uh, to this land? Famous travel diary of Mark Twain in the middle nineteenth century. It describes the utter desolation of Eretz Israel. Uh, it's really this is really what he's talking about. The non-Jews would come to this land in the many th- in the thousands of years, a couple of thousand years that Klal Israel weren't here, and be totally uh, uh, shocked by the complete desolation. The Ramban actually, when he uh, he came to Eretz Israel, he couldn't find a minion in Rushalayim. Had to go down to I think it was to uh, Yericho. No. Bethlehem. Anyway, 
what is this? Let's, let's, let's discuss it again. First of all, there's a couple of questions here. Umina nisim hagadolim hamufusorim odem moda benisim and historim shein yesoda Torah kula. From the great public miracles, a person admits, comes to understand, to testify about hidden miracles, Shehem Yisoda Torah Kula, which they are the foundation of the entire Torah. First of all, what is a hidden miracle? As we started off last week, the whole understanding of a miracle is something which is public, which, so to speak, the word nes in Hebrew is the same as the word for flag, because just as a flag st- sticks up and says, look, there's something going on over here. So a nes, by definition, should be something which draws attention to itself that there's something supernatural going on. So how can a miracle be hidden? So let me give you two mashalim. First of all, we have to understand, and maybe we should actually see this Ramban over here, I think what I'll do is I'll explain to you this outside first. There's a concept of mazal. Mazal, mazalot, mean the constellations. The, uh, we mentioned this last week, there is a certain truth in astrology because the way Hashem set up the chain of hashpa'ot, of influences, in the various highest regions down to this world, the last step, stop, before those hashpa'ot enter the world is through the stars. And therefore a person looking into the stars could, we're not allowed to do that, but it's theoretically possible, he might get the interpretation of it wrong, he might not have sufficient knowledge, but theoretically it is possible to see what's about to happen in the stars. In other words, there's a thing called a mazal. Mazal is from the root zila to flow. The flow of Hashpa comes down and down and down on the last step of the stars. And that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu moved the star from one side of the world to the other, one side of the sky to the other, in order that Avram, who was childless, and uh, if you looked in his, uh, his, uh, astro- his, uh, his horoscope, you would see he wouldn't have children. But Hashem is able to change a person's horoscope. In other words, we are all born with a certain predestination. The Kiddush is that that predestination could be changed. Let me give you two examples. Let's take um, Beryl. Beryl is an enormous tzaddik. Beryl gives about half a million dollars to tzaddaka every year. Nobody ever beats him to the base madras. He's always there first, he's always there last. Beryl has never been heard to speak a word of, uh, a word of Lashon Hara in his life. He's universally popular. He's super straight in his business dealings. His wife right, lights 19 candles every Friday night. <laughs> Beryl is the epitome of the tzaddik. Now, if you'd looked in Beryl's horoscope, you would see that Beryl was supposed to pass away at the age of 74, um, from some, let's say, illness. Beryl actually, because he's such a tzaddik, goes on living till 90. Now, is that a miracle? Don't think so. It doesn't look like it. People live to 95, people live to 105, people live to 115. But if you could see behind the scenes, you'd have seen that Hashem changed his mazal, supernaturally, a hidden miracle, and gave Beryl another 15 years of life as a result of the fact that he was such a tzaddik. Case number two, Shmerel. Shmerel never misses a chance to drive past a McDonald's. He pulls in there. He's Jewish, of course. He pulls in there and he orders himself a Big Mac, a couple of Big Macs. Shmerel, his, his entire conversation is either Loshen Hora or Nivel Pear. 
it's difficult for him to get a sentence out with you without using sw some swear word or another. <laughs> he is um, under uh, investigation by the federal government for <laughs> all kinds of stuff. And Schmerl is a real no good Nick. Schmerl passes the way, the ripe old age of 75. Right? It's not, um, I mean, nowadays maybe it's not so old, but it's also not so young. Now, what happened was the Kodesh Baruch Hu killed Shmerel early because if you'd seen his horoscope, Shmerel was supposed to go on living to the ripe old age of 85. What did I say 85 before? 90. 90. Uh, 90. He, he died at 90? The first one died at 90. No, 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 Shmerel. Shmerel died at how old was he? I forgot. So he was supposed to 75. 75. He was supposed to live to the age of 85. Hashem cut <laughs> 10 years from his life miraculously. That is a hidden miracle. In other words, that we're all living in a series of, and let's read this again, from these great open miracles, Adam Mode, a person testifies, or comes to testify, will come to understand, about something called hidden miracles, they are the foundation of the entire Torah. A person has no part in the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, Ad Shanaim, until he believes, but called the Vereinu and everything that happens to us, called Mikreinu, Shakulam Nisim, Ein Behem Teva, Uminag Shaolam. Meaning that, Ela im Yase ha mitzvah, if a person does a mitzvah, Yatslichenu Scharo, they will apportion him his reward in this world, not just in Olam Haba. And if he does an Avera, he'll get punished in this world as well. Now, there's a couple of points I want to bring out. Before we do that, let's go and look at another Ramban. The Ram, this is Ramban in Pasha's Vo'era, a couple of weeks ago. And the Ramban discusses here what the... the one of the names of Hashem is Kael Shadkai. Shadkai. So, the Ramban is talking about this point. Shadkai, he says... Is connected with the concept of shodeid ma'arochis. Shodeid is like a a gangster, I suppose you call, or a, or a highwayman that Hashem, so to speak, steals ma'arochot, uh, like a ma'arochi is, is a is a is a system of stars, as he said before, and he rearranges the mazalot. Kael shadkai means that he moves things behind the scenes. And as we said, that Hashem appeared to the Ovois through this name, Kalshad Kai. But the name Yudke Vavke was not known to them. They knew Hashem through Kalshad Kai, meaning he, he manipulated things behind nature behind the scenes, but not like as he did in Mitzrayim where everything was open. Says the Ramban, and I'm reading the Tov Yerushalayim, which is a, a slight, a slight emendation of the words of the Ramban, it makes it a bit clearer. Hashem appeared to the Ovis in the name of Kel Shadkai. Asher, which who menatzech es ha-ma'arochos. He, so to speak, conquers. He dominates the ma'arochos of Shemaim, the earth, the, the uh, celestial uh, constellations. Ubasalim nisim gedolim, and he made for them great miracles, but without cancelling the minag olam, the way the world works. In other words, exactly as we gave in our two examples. Hashem, so to speak, pulled strings behind the scenes. Meaning, that in the midst of famine, He fed them. And He saved them from death. Now, not everybody dies in a famine. But the fact they were saved was miraculous. In, in war, <coughs> He saved them from the sword. Again, not everybody dies in a war. But the fact that the others were saved was through intervention behind the scenes and he gave them riches and honor and all good as everything which is promised in the Torah has begun to, as he's going to go on to say which if you remember the brachas and the klolos because if you think about it the brachas and the klolos later on in the Torah where it says what's going to happen if the Jewish people keep the Torah and what's going to happen if they don't keep the Torah it's interesting that you don't find anywhere in the Torah and I'll throw this open to you as a question. Why oh, didn't put this on? Is that right? 
Okay. Put it on. Okay. You don't find anything in the Torah where um, it specifies any, anywhere, openly anyway, the reward for keeping the Torah, the punishment for breaking the Torah. You find nothing about Olam Haba. All of the promises in the Torah for the good or for the not so good refer to Olam Hazeh. If you keep the Torah, you'll get rain in its time. You won't have marauding armies tramping across your, your you'll be safe, you'll have you'll have abund- you'll have abundance, you'll dwell safely, you'll dwell in peace. Why don't we hear anything about what the reward that a person gets in Alam Haba? Why is the Torah, the written Torah for sure, completely full of rewards and punishments in this world? for keeping the Torah. Why don't we hear anything about Olam Abba? I'll throw that one open to you. Yeah. It's enough. It's enough. Okay, but we know for a fact that we are going to get reward in Olam Abba. The question is, why doesn't the Torah Shabal Peh tell, uh, tell that to us? The answer is as follows. It's logical. It's self-evident. It's axiomatic that a person will re- be rewarded in a spiritual time and place for a spiritual action. A mitzvah is something spiritual. And therefore, it's axiomatic that a person will be rewarded in a spiritual time and place, meaning the world to come. What's not axiomatic, what's counterintuitive, is that a person should get rewarded for something spiritual in a physical place like Ola Mazer, especially as we've understood before that a person has a mazal, that so to speak everything that's going to happen to him in this world starts off in a horoscope, is predetermined. So therefore the Torah, <coughs> excuse me, has to tell me about rewards in Ola Mazer because they're counterintuitive. I would think that, you know, something a person's born into this world and whatever he does in this world will not affect Ola Mazer. True, it'll affect his Olam Abba. I need to know, because it's totally not obvious, that a person's actions in this world will also be rewarded or punished in this world. That if he's a, 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 a barrel, he'll get an extra 10 years of life in this world. And he'll win the jackpot. And if he's Shmerel, then he'll lose, lose the word, leave the word early, or Chasvuchila, he'll get some other punishment. These are things that I wouldn't have expected. That's what he says here. So he says that any good that comes to a person comes to him as a schar mitzvah in this world, and all evil that comes to a person in this world comes as a punishment for his avera. Excuse me. And all of this only comes through a ness, a hidden miracle. Where a person totally left to his nature or his horoscope, his mazal. It would not be that his actions would add or detract from him in any way in this world. And therefore, all reward and punishment in this world are all miraculous. But they're hidden miracles, says the Ramban. Because a person who sees them thinks that they are the way of the world. When a person lives to 90 years old, we don't say that's a miracle. If you knew he was supposed to die at 75, it's a miracle. But it's not seen as a miracle. (coughs) But, truth be told, these are all schava onesh, reward and punishment to a person. And it is for this reason, says the Ramban, that the Torah goes to great lengths to about the, the testimonies of reward and punishment in this world. And it does not mention, it doesn't testify at all to reward and punishment for the neshama in the world of the neshamas, because reward and punishment in this world, they are miracles. They are not natural, but Nitzchius Anashama, the eternity of the soul, Behid Baka Belokim, and its cleaving to Hashem, 
is something which is natural in the world to come. Shehi shaboi el alokim asher natna. When the soul returns to God who gave it, then clearly it's self-evident and logical that that's when a person will receive his reward and punishment. Okay, so we now understood a little bit about what are hidden miracles. There's a few other things here that we need to discuss. And this bothered me for many, many years until Rabbi um, Yaakov Elituv pointed out to me there's another Ramban <coughs> which is very, very similar to, to this uh, Ramban at the end of Pasha's bow. It's called Torah Sashem Tamima. And in the sixth parak, he has a very, very similar uh, Loshan, very similar language. Now, what bothered me about this? Listen to this. From the great, <coughs> open, public miracles, a person admits to hidden miracles. What's the connection? In other words, how is it mukrach? How is it perforce? How is it... Uh, how does it necessitate that because there are great open miracles that a person comes to understand that everything in his life is a hidden miracle, both, both on, the, on, the, on the public level and the private level? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe there was this once and once only great, uh, how do you say, um, a, a display of, of supernatural events, and that's it. How do you see from the fact that there, was the, the, there were these great supernatural events that that is, that, that uh, as he says, Umina nisim ha-gadolam mufasome odam modeb nisim ha-nistorim. Why? What's, you could have one without the other. Is the, is the point clear? So, for many years, I, I, there are various answers that I heard. And none of them sat well with me. But he says here in Torah Tamima, Perik Vov, Ois Lamad Aleph. Listen to this. Slightly different. Umin ha mitzvahs ha Meaning the mitzvahs of the remembering of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. Va hasmoda bahen. And a person's constancy in them. The constant remembering of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. The constant performing of the mitzvahs of Zeichel at Sietz Mitzrayim, Tefillin, Mezuzah, Shabbos, all of the mitzvahs which we do, which have from that, and a, when a person does this, She'odam makia mehem, umoda behen, ala nisim hamufosorim, hamorim ala chidush v'ayediyah v'ashkocha, shalosh yisodus ha-toira, that a person by how do you say, by his constancy, by his application, by his faithfulness to these mitzvahs, and his understanding, his, his, his kavanah, in what it is that he's doing when he's doing these mitzvahs, there's a process of osmosis. This is not something logical. Logically, there is no reason why a person should infer, because there were great, one-off, huge miracles in Egypt, there is no logical reason, reason to assume that a person would understand that everything in his life and in the life of every Jew is nothing more than hidden miracles. There's nothing logical about that. What he's saying, the Ramban is saying here, is this is something, is a process, of, a process by which a person works on himself by doing the mitzvahs and doing them in such a way with kavana. The his constancy, that he will be given as a gift the realization, the insight, the knowledge that everything in his life is basically a hidden miracle. There's nothing logical here at all. This is what the Ramban says. This is really much easier to understand here. When a person is, does these nisim, meaning what he does, the mitzvahs, which recall the nisim ha-gadolim and mufrosomim, the great public mitzv- uh, miracles. Or the moda, so then when a person is the hatmada by doing this, this brings a person from inside himself. He's given a gift of being moda, of understanding that everything in his life is no more than a hidden miracle. And they are Yesoda Torah Kula. Now, another problem. 
שאין לו עוד חלק בתורס משה רבנו, עד שנאמים בכל דברינו מקראינו שכולם ניסים, אין בהם טבע מנהגו של עולם. He's saying that, very strong language, that a person does not have a portion in the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, Ad Shanamin, until he believes that all, everything that happens to us is no more than hidden miracles. Now, that's a very strong thing to say. He has no chilek in the Torah. You mean a person who puts uh, tefillin on every day, says Shema every day, davens every day, keeps Shavas every week, keeps all the Chagim, and yet he doesn't believe that everything in the world that's happening to him is a hidden miracle, has no part in the Torah? Difficult to understand. Again, for many years, I, that's what I thought Pshat was. And I was told that this was Pshat. So he, Rabbi Elitov, also pointed out to me that there's another understanding. First of all, you have to put this in the background, that the Ramban is, is, has a, um, many, the Rambam amongst them, people who disagree with this. He's really, and I think we can be Madaic from his Lashem, when we say, She'eno dom chelek b'toros Moshe Rabbeinu. Why doesn't he just say, if the first Pshad is correct, She'en la'odom chelek b'toros. It's clearly, there's a difference between something called Torah and Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu. And I think the answer is as follows. There's a Torah, which is the mitzvahs, which are the mitzvahs, and for sure that a person has a chelek in the Torah when he does, he performs the mitzvahs. There's another thing called Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu. When Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Har Sinai, the third time his face was like a Karen or the Torah ceased to be just, well not just, ceased to be words. It became something totally ethereal. It was the light that was emanating from Moshe Rabbeinu's face. This is the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Karen or the light of the Torah, the let's say, the hidden parts of the Torah. A person will not have any of this supernal Torah, if you like. This, I'm not necessarily, I'm not saying necessarily Kabbalah in that sense, but I'm saying that there's a, that there's a Torah which we have, which is, are the words, which are the meaning, which is the pshat, which all, when all, when all its depth. And then there's something called Ne'er Mitzvah V'Torah Or. Every mitzvah is a candle, and the Torah is the abstraction of each, each, individual, each individual light contains with it something which is, relates to an abstract thing called Torah or the light itself. The light itself, which was the Karen or of Moshe Rabbeinu, that's what it means that Torah is, that he has a person until he gets that, and again, it's a stage, a person has to be masmid, he says, he has to do the mitzvahs, and he has to be masmid, he has to hatmada, he has to concentrate on them, he has to, yeah, by doing the mitzvahs in a way which is constant, a person comes to this higher level of understanding from learning about, and, and specifically these mitzvahs of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, as we said, uh, Shema, uh, Shabbos, Tefillin, these mitzvahs b- contain within them a hidden power which will bring a person to understand that his entire life is being run by a series of hidden miracles. And when he gets to that level, or without that level, he says, he cannot start to have any understanding of what Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu is, this higher supernal light. Okay, that's as far as I think I can take it. We spoke tonight about many things, principally this idea of what is a hidden miracle, and um, that's basically, I think, uh, yeah. Okay, any questions? Yeah. This is what I want to say. I, I, this is what came out in discussion with, with Rabbi Elituf. Um, this is something like beyond just, not just, beyond, there's a higher level which is called Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu. That's because it's very difficult 
to say that a person has no chelik in the Torah at all if he doesn't believe that everything's a hidden miracle, especially as many, many um, Rishonim disagree with the Rambam on this particular point. Like even a wife, like she's related with somehow. What to, like, to not to not get married or? No, 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 no. Like, until, like at a certain point, I think Moshe had to. Yes. To, okay. But remember, nobody is going to be zoicha to Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu, because th- that was the, the Torah that Moshe received. Ain lo kam navi be Yisrael kamosha. Nobody's going to be ever be on Moshe Rabbeinu's level again. But whatever that Karen or that Mo- that people saw from the radiance of Torah, Moshe's Torah. That is something that maybe a person can have a little bit of connection to. The radiance, not the source. Moshe contained within him all of the Torah. Nobody's going to do that. And nobody should try and... And, and, and very clearly, this is... I think very important, the lesson from this is, you know, people nowadays especially are so interested in mystical things. And, you know, they want to get on the internet and they want to learn Kabbalah. It's such nonsense. The way a person gets to some kind of connection to Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu, which is something to do with that light, is what? How does a person do that? He has to, let's go back down the level. He has to see in his life that everything is miraculous. Now, I don't know about how many of you in this room are actually doing this right now. I'm not with you. I don't see everything. I have to work on this idea. I do not go through my life looking around life and seeing, wow. I mean, a person has a mitzvah to see Hashkocha. And to see everything that's coming to you as schava oinish. But it's not something I walk around with as a constant awareness. Halavai. And how does a person get that? So hopefully I'll get there one day. And how do you get there? By doing the mitzvahs. Doing the mitzvahs. Doing the mitzvahs. There are no shortcuts. You do the mitzvahs, you do them better. You do them without more hasmoda. You daven better. You, you learn better. You, you're, you're nicer to your wife, you're nicer to your friend, you're, you're, you're less jealous, you don't, you're not makpid on people. This is the only way. I mean, this is very clearly like, <laughs> people might say, a very lit for Shem, but that's, it's the Ramban. The Ramban is saying, how do you get that? Hasmode in the mitzvahs. It's not like you have to go off and float around in, in the mountains somewhere. <laughs> you're not going to get there by doing that. So he does, he does infer by saying that you don't have a chalik in Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu if you don't believe that, but if you do believe it, then you would, then you would infer that he, you do have a chalik in, in Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu. Yes. It seems to be inferring that you, if a person can get to that level, but it's like three stages. Stage yeah. number one, hasmodah in the mitzvahs. Stage number two, if you really do a good job on that, you'll get to the understanding that everything is miraculous. When you get to that level, then you'll have this awareness of Torah's Moshe Rabbeinu. You'll be connected to some level of connection to the Torah, which is something to do with the the awe of Moshe Rabbeinu, with the Karen awe of Moshe Rabbeinu. More than that, I can't say, because I don't know. (laughs)